Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you about vinyl sales. What's going on with vinyl records? I recently saw a video from Billy Hurst of Riverbend Records and he made this video that just really made me sit up in my chair and get me to wondering. And so I thought I'd make a video, just kind of a little bit of a follow-up, uh, delve into how I feel about the subject he talked about and share my thoughts. Uh, Billy Hurst owns Riverbend Records in Godfrey, Illinois. He, he is celebrating his fourth year anniversary of having a record store and he knows the ins and outs of the record selling business. I don't know that kind of stuff. I watched what he was saying um, and as a vinyl collector and a YouTuber though, it just like he was saying something it's like ding 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 i see it too and i wanted to share my perspective because i literally talk to hundreds of vinyl collectors every single week your comments my replies and i'm hearing a lot of things that rang true with what he was saying and i want to even maybe expand on that a little bit so uh, i will leave a link to billy hurst of riverbend records his channel so you can check out his video about this because I'm not going to go into all of the details um, I, you need to see his video first or at least see it at some point so to fill in the blanks of what I'm gonna say uh, he goes into more detail as a record store owner and what he sees but um, in one of the things he did say was he is noticing people bringing in certain types of records um, he's talking about reissues or the newer records, like, um, let me show you a few. Um, Harry Styles. Why would anybody bring in these Harry Styles? Here's a Target exclusive. Um, these Harry Style records. Uh, here's another one. You know, it's a Target exclusive of Harry's house. Uh, this is, I love Harry Styles, so to me that's like, why would anybody want to return these? But it's not just Harry Styles, it's Ariana Grande, that Adele 30 record, oh my gosh, you can't get rid of it. It's like it's the, um, the vinyl poison or something, I don't know, the uh, cheese touch, if you will, of the vinyl records. We can't get rid of Adele 30. Um, for one, they made way too many copies of that record, and for two, it just wasn't one of her best, in my opinion. I never bought that record after listening to it and checking it out. It was a hard no for me. Uh, but there's just a lot of the newer releases that people are trading in now. And when he said that, it really hit me because it's like, you know, when I go to used record stores now and I'm digging through the used records, I'm running into a lot of those. And yes, I'm still seeing Michael Jackson's Thriller and Eagle's Greatest Hits. Those old vintage records are still there, thank goodness. But I'm now seeing Walmart exclusives, Target exclusives of current music. And, um, you know, he was wondering why that would be and um, had some comments that are very interesting that you just need to check out. But I want to just say that my thoughts on that, uh, what I think is going on as far as the younger people, and this is totally speculation, so on my part, I just think that younger people don't have that nostalgia for vinyl records that we all grew up with them. We love them. We know them intimately. They were a part of our lives and our childhood. They don't have that connection. Uh, they've probably seen vinyl records in movies and TV. They thought they were cool looking and they went out and bought an adorable Crosley turntable because they make them in these beautiful colors. They do look great in a room as a piece of decoration. They bought the beautiful records of artists they love, beautiful colored vinyl. Uh, they displayed them in their bedrooms, played them occasionally. And then here, that was probably five years ago, five years later now, they're looking at these vinyl records and let's be honest, um, nothing wrong with Crosley turntables if that's what you want. But I can tell you, 
be out of personal experience, you're not getting the sound quality of vinyl records and what it truly represents and how great it is if you're playing your records on a Crosley turntable. So they're, they're actually probably thinking, you know, streaming sounds better, streaming's cheaper at $40 per record. Right now, I don't have the money for that. Uh, you know, with inflation, everything else in our lives has gone up. We have less spending money. Um, these people who are into it, these younger people from five years ago or, or so, are now saying, you know, I can just stream the music I want. I don't really need these vinyl records anymore. They're taking up space in um, the dorm I'm living in now that I'm in college or uh, the apartment I'm now renting out. You know, they've grown up and they don't have that nostalgic feel for vinyl records. They don't have the sound quality because, I mean, let's face it, when we're young, we don't have the money to go out and buy a lot of stereo equipment. You don't have to spend big bucks to get good sounding equipment, but even $250 when you're young is a ton of money. It's a ton of money anyway, it's a lot of money. So they're, they're just not getting the benefits of vinyl that we did when we grew up and what we really thought was great. Um, some of us old fogies would also make the argument that their music just isn't as good and doesn't have the sticking power that Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and the Stones and all of those amazing bands, Van Halen. They just don't have that same sticking power. But I wanna make a little bit of an argument about that because uh, I, I just feel like what you grow up with, even if we as old people think it's bad, it's still nostalgic for them. I know my daughter still has romantic uh, feelings or nostalgic feelings, I should say, for Kesha and Lady Gaga and uh, Cobra Starship. Just different bands that a lot of us, you know, are groups that are artists that they, we don't get into, but they grew up with. And she still has a love for that music um, that when she was a teenager, she heard. So I don't think that these artists, it's, you know, I'd like to think that, yeah, it's just because their music's bad and it doesn't have the sticking power. And some of that might be true, but I think they have nostalgic feelings for the music they grew up with in the same way we do. We just feel like our music was a little better, right? Um, I think the inflation is a huge thing where um, people just aren't wanting to pay that $35 to $40 for a record. Um, so they're having to let that go. They're gaining storage space by not having them. And I just think for some people, um, especially the ones that were just into it because they thought it was cool looking, nothing wrong with that but they've just decided here four or five maybe a few more years later it's not working for them anymore and they're letting their record collections go so we're seeing the ariana grandes and the adele records and uh, unfortunately some harry styles records but i also want to piggyback on that because there is more to the story uh, as someone who makes vinyl videos every week, I try my best to answer every comment that I get. Uh, I'm sorry if I miss a few. Sometimes YouTube will hold one for review and I don't always think to check the ones that are like being held back. A lot of them are harmless and I don't really know why YouTube holds them back. Just there's something about them. Um, so I apologize if I miss some comments, but I try to answer them all and I hear from you. A lot of you are telling me, and you're older collectors, not the young ones that are letting go of their Crosleys and letting go of these newer artists. You're letting go of buying vinyl records. You still love vinyl records. You're enjoying what you have already, but you are now cutting way back or not buying vinyl at all at the moment because other expenses, other things in your life are more important, you know, having a roof over your head and groceries and making sure your kids needs are met. And I get that. And I applaud you for doing the right thing and paying and, and being fiscally responsible, of course. So a lot of you are telling me that instead of going and digging vinyl records, 
you're now going for used CDs. And I cannot tell you how many people are telling me that. That doesn't reflect in the CD sales that they're going to report to you because they're digging through the used stuff at flea markets, thrift stores, garage sales. They're getting the fun of the dig that they were getting with vinyl records, but they have switched over to CDs. Used CDs sell for nearly nothing right now. They are a, the biggest bargain out there. For the people that just love to have a physical format and own it in their hands, uh, they're telling me CDs are a lot more affordable. They sound pretty good. They're very clean. You don't have to worry about the skips and pops and clicks. They're easier to store because they're smaller. And it's just what they're into right now because vinyl is a little bit out of reach. Even the used vinyl records are expensive these days, you know? So a lot of people are doing that. And on top of that, some people are having to take it a step farther and dig into the collection of what they've been buying in the last few years. And they're letting go of some gems, uh, what I think are gems, you know, let's, Let's just, this is an example, okay? These Walmart exclusives. This is Kiss Love Gun. This is a classic record and we all love, but they're deciding, you know, that's Walmart exclusive version. I don't really need that one. I have an original. You know, you think of Journey Escape. A lot of people bought the Walmart exclusive or the Boston one on blue vinyl. They think, you know, I already have an original of that. And yes, it was fun to go out and buy that colored vinyl version. Um, Walmart for a few years was having fantastic Christmas sales where you could get them for $15. But you know, I don't need that version. I will take them in and trade them in have a smaller vinyl collection and get a little money back and very little money i must say is the case because these uh, record stores when you bring in these uh, newer used records you're not going to get the amount of money that you would have from um if it was still sealed i mean once you open a record and it's newer and you can still buy a sealed copy and another store I mean, you're just not going to get that much money back from them. You know, if you pay $35 for a record, I don't know what record stores will give you in trade or in cash, but I would imagine it's a fraction of what you originally paid for it. But some people are still doing that. I mean, let's face it. If you have tough times ahead of you um, and you're wanting to get some extra money, are you going to maybe return this Harry Styles exclusive. It's cool looking. Look how pretty that is. That is an extremely cool looking record. Would you rather get rid of that or this classic original Led Zeppelin? I think that's pretty easy to figure out. You're going to keep your original Led Zeppelin record and you're going to let go of these Walmart exclusives and Target exclusives and newer releases before you let go of Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin or the Beatles. You're going to hang on to those for as long as possible. So I don't really know what this all means. It's kind of got me worried because there have been reports that vinyl sales are down by 30%. And then immediately I saw a report. Nope, that's not true. That's not happening. Um, I want to believe that it's not true. 30% drop off seems very, very high. Um, I don't really believe that's the case, but just based on anecdotal evidence and from what people are telling me, people who were avid collectors a few years ago are now having to slow down. I wouldn't be surprised if there hasn't been a ton of growth in vinyl sales. Um, you know, who knows? We'll know at the end of the year or early next year what the true statistics are right now. The Reports are conflicting and I don't know which way to believe. I just know that I see a lot of people who are watching my channel who love vinyl aren't buying vinyl. I know I've even personally slowed down a lot this year. I've also had a lot of other things going on in my life. So had not the move happened and I was still in Kentucky, maybe I would still be consuming and buying vinyl as much. But my vinyl buying has slowed down quite a bit and so has a lot of people just based on the comments that I read. 
there are some bright spots to this, in my opinion. I just don't think that those used records, like this Led Zeppelin record, I think people are going to continue to buy the used vinyl, That's especially the ones that are in good condition. I think there's still always going to be a hunger to have those vintage records. And I know a lot of the younger people um, that, you know, some of them are into buying the Crosley and getting the uh, artists because they liked the colored vinyl. There are some of you that are uh, young, you put your old souls, and you just like buying everything thrift store. You don't like things that are new. You like the used stuff and you're buying those used records. You are probably going to be vinyl collectors and you're probably here to stay. You're not going to change your mind. This might be a good time if you are a vinyl collector to pick up some of those records that are sitting in the bins by the newer artists, like the Harry Styles, like the Ariana Grandes. Instead of going out and buying the new record, go buy one of those used ones at a record store. You're probably going to save a lot of money, you know, um, just by buying something that's mildly used. You do risk, you know, um, sometimes Crosleys can leave a little groove damage. It depends on how often a record had been played. You can kind of visually tell sometimes, so keep an eye out for that. But I just think used records, uh, like the vintage stuff, is still very much in demand. I also think that audiophile records are still in demand. Uh, the ones that are priced in the decent sweet spot category where they sound great, they have um, amazing uh, mastering engineers doing the job, um, the album covers look great and the vinyl sounds incredible. You know, like the, you think about um, analog productions, uh, Rhino Hi-Fi, Mobile Fidelity, all of those companies, I think there's still a huge market for great sounding vinyl records. I know that's what I'm still interested in. Really, honestly, um, the big part for me where I collect the most are originals that have a great reputation for sounding great and audiophile records that have a great reputation for sounding great. Because for me, the whole audio uh, experience, the vinyl listening experience, is about how something sounds and how it makes me feel, the nostalgia that it brings. Um, and a new record that sounds absolutely amazing can bring me back to my childhood. Uh, you know, a new good sounding reissue and can bring back those memories. Um, but anyway, I just thought it was an interesting discussion brought up by Billy Hurst of Riverbend Records. I love his store. I love him. He's a great person. Um, he's a huge influence on why I got into making videos myself. He was, uh, before I started making vinyl videos, he was my favorite channel. Um, I still love when he pops up and makes videos. And, um, what he's saying is true uh, and real because I'm seeing it as I dig through, you know, as a vinyl purchaser. What he's saying is being returned. I'm seeing it in the bins. And I want to know what you think about this whole situation. Um, are you someone that has given up on vinyl records for now, but hope to return when maybe inflation goes down? Um, are you someone, a younger person, who's totally let go of their vinyl collection? And if you are, I want to know why. I think that's a very interesting discussion. I think, you know, maybe it won't be the big phenomenon that it has been in the last several years, but I do think vinyl records and vinyl collectors are here to stay. And uh, it may not be the sales that we had during the pandemic, but I do think uh, we're all committed and we all love vinyl records. Um, I just want to hear from you where you stand on this issue. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel because it does help. Hit the like button and the notification bell. Uh, most importantly though, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.